Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And in this video, I wanna talk about what's new in LightKey in 2021 or in about the past year and how you can use it to make yourself a better event. So I'm looking here on my other monitor at the LightKey release notes and I gotta crack up when I talk about uh, what's new from LightKey in the past year. Um, because when you talk about LightKey, they are like so Mac that you know, when they, they publish their release notes and they have their log of what's new, they don't have dates on any of it. They just hide that. It's like, you know what? You don't need to know when this came out. It, it feels very Mac to me, right? Like, we're only going to tell you the things that, that we feel you need to know. And I know I'm not a Mac user anymore, and so I'm sorry if you are a Mac user, but it just feels very Mac to me and it kind of cracks me up. But from my memory, uh, we're talking about version about 3.4 to the current when I'm recording this in early August 2021, which is 3.7. And there's some good stuff here. So LightKey as a whole, as a lighting controller, as I've mentioned uh, in both this in my past video and in other videos, is a really great intermediate level lighting software. Uh, it runs on Macs, so if you're not a Mac user, it's probably going to be expensive to get into it. Um, but if you have a Mac, it's not unreasonably priced for what you get. It is a yearly cost, but again, it's not outrageous. Um, and what you get for that is a really solid program, what I like to think of as the new Jans Vista, because Vista, as I mentioned in the last video, was a console that you know took the church uh, by Storm. It was a really great console that a lot of churches use as great software. Um, it was always on the pricier end. And then over time, there there was a time period, uh, even pre-COVID, where they just weren't releasing anything new. There was just nothing new happening with it, and it was getting behind other lighting consoles while not increasing in price. In, in fact, even to the point where, you know, pretty much all their hardware got discontinued, um, and then they sold the console Vista to Chroma Q, which is a professional fixture company. They make uh, very pro-grade fixtures, and... Uh, to me, Vista doesn't really fit what Chroma Q does as a whole. It just doesn't fit in with what they do. And since taking it over, for the most part, it's turned into work more like a regular professional lighting console, which was never really the thing with Vista. So with Lightkey, that's the thing. It's like lighting for non-lighting people, as uh, one of my friends always reminds me. I, I used to call Vista that. And in 2021, there's some really nice new stuff in here. Uh, that I want to talk about. So the first is um, is that if you go in here and you're adjusting something and you want a little bit more course control, you can actually press shift there, see? Shift. And it actually jumps a little bit more. Uh, it's a little bit coarser when you hold in shift and you're using uh, your scroll wheel or what have you. So. You know, that's that's helpful when you're trying to make that fine adjustment, or rather a coarse adjustment. You're trying to move something really far, and you want it to happen pretty quickly, okay? Hitting shift uh, is going to help you with that. Um, in the live tab, the other things that have really uh, been been really great, I think, for light key is if we go over here, um, any queue now has a fade time, okay? So if I go to modifiers... Right click on it, go to modifiers. I know if you're on a Mac, you can't right click um, and hit fade time. And then you're able to change the fade time of that queue. Um, by default, I think it's a second, but then you're able to drag it up 200% would be uh, like two seconds. And then zero, uh, if you drag it all the way down, that becomes uh, instant. That's zero time uh, for the fade in and fade out. Okay. And so, and so that's really nice as well. Um, while I'm talking about that, actually, um, there are a lot of modifiers that came in here. So modifiers are one of those things that makes LightKey unique and, and really different from other lighting consoles that I've used. Because LightKey does a really good job of taking all the attributes of the lights that we have here to control, and then they basically they universalize them, in a sense, right? They make it so that any attribute from one light could be copied to another, like color, for example, you know, not things like gobos. If the light didn't have gobos, you can't assign a gobo to it. 
But things like color, intensity, etc. are universal across lights. They can be copied and pasted, moved around. And so the modifiers allow you then on the live page to attach these modifiers on there. Okay, like I'll do hue. And then you just get this little button here. And you're able to actually shift the hue, the intensity, the fade time. You can put a bunch of these on there. Um, I believe you can also assign the modifiers to MIDI controls, to faders and stuff. And uh, that allows you to do some really interesting stuff because now instead of just having like a cue that runs itself or runs an effect or whatever in the live tab, now it's like, okay, I can take that. And while I'm live, while I'm in my event running the lights, I can now shift you know like here i've got this effect and i've just shifted the speed so now it can be a slow effect it can be a mid speed effect it can be a very fast effect or anywhere in between and so instead of having multiple different buttons i can just do one uh and that's that's really it they've also added oh this is big they've added osc control or open sound control so OSC, if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of like MIDI control. It's, it's um, a way for other programs and other devices to interface control-wise with LightKey. And so this is really huge because now, you know, straight out of something like QLab or Ableton or um, Visor, there are other options out there, or the Touch OSC app, you can go, you can send commands to control LightKey. And so that opens up a lot of really nice possibilities when it comes to automating your event, when it comes to, you know, having things play back automatically. Maybe it's from a slide background, like in ProPresenter, though I don't think ProPresenter actually does OSC yet. Um, I wish they would. Um, but, you know, if it is QLab, if you're doing a theatrical style thing, um, then you're able to go and just, you know, define the OSC command, send it out, light key can then receive that command and the lights can happen automatically. And so that's a really, really cool thing. Okay. Um, other than that, you know, that's pretty much it. They fixed a lot of stuff. They've added in more MIDI stuff. Um, but for the most part, you know, these are the big things this year. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, um, and you're interested in light key, check out my link uh, below for more about light key. You can download it for free. And if you do go to purchase it, whether you're renewing it or buying it for the first time, Hop through my link. Uh, we'll have that linked below or it's learnstagelighting.com slash lightkey uh, because then you can go ahead and uh, get me a little bit of a kickback from the team, which always helps at no additional cost to you uh, because with lightkey, there's one place to buy it. It's from them. There's no discounts. Um, you get what you get, but you know, I think it's reasonable for what it costs. Until next time, guys, I'm David from Learn Stage Lighting and I'll see you. Thanks.